So, if you guys remember back in October, we took the Impreza track car out to uh, Ridge Motorsports Park, uh, and it seemed to do great, except it had a little bit of a problem with the drivetrain. Now, uh, the car, I didn't mention it in the video, uh, which you guys should go check that out. Um, but the, the rear diff started howling really bad. Uh, and so we decided to pull the diff out. And today we're here at Drivetrain Specialties here in Newburgh, Oregon. Uh, here with Paul, he's the owner of the shop. And he is gonna actually be tearing down the rear diff out of the race car and we're gonna figure out what's going on. I've got a new set of tapered roller bearings uh, and new seals. And we're gonna set all the backlashes uh, and the engagement on the ring and pinion and get this thing back together and put it back in the car. First thing we're gonna do is take the rear cover off. What do you mean? Huh? Now the next thing is the side bearing covers. We need to mark these side to side. I've already marked these. I've peen marked them. One mark here, two marks here. You don't want to get them mixed up. <clears throat> I want to keep everything together. There's shims in here that make everything adjustable. So we're going to set this off to the side. Next one. Set that aside. Now this one being a posi unit is very tight to get out of there. Like a Chinese puzzle. It barely comes apart. I think it's got to be turned just right. Get that ring gear bolt through the case. <clears throat> they could have gave us a little more clearance there, but they didn't. Okay, next. Pinion nut. get the yoke off, just tap it with a hammer. Set that aside. Now we'll knock the seal out. The pinion seal. That's gone. Flip it up. Now there's a support bearing right here that needs to come out. I'm using a, a pilot bearing tool. Seems to work really nice for this. There's the front support bearing and the sleeve. Okay, now the pinion will come out. That front bearing held in there a little bit. Front bearing. Crush collar. Really not a crush collar. This is a, a solid collar with a sleeve on it. Okay, now we need to go over to the press and press this rear pinion bearing off. Okay, we're going to press this rear bearing off the pinion shaft with our 10 millimeter snap-on socket. Tool guys love that. Little tool here. Okay, we'll run this back over to the bench, put the new bearing on it. So we're gonna put a little oil on the shaft here. Help that bearing go on. Now we're going to take this back over to the press, set this up and press it on. Now we'll 
press that down in there. Now we will drive the races out of the carrier. See the races down in there? There's little flats carved in the housing to get a chisel in there and tap those out. Same way. There's the rear race. There's the two pinion races. Put a little oil on them. How's that for a used driver? <laughs> Jesus. I've already broken off three tangs. <laughs> I've been using that for 30 years. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it works, man. Yeah. <laughs> now this one's way down in there. Pinion. We're going to put the original shims back on it. What do you think about the wear on the um, on the ring and pinion? The gears look fine. There's no pitting. There's no galling. Talk about the patch. What, what are you looking for for a good wear patch? The good wear pattern means that it's in the center two thirds of the gear. Uh, they say competition wise it could be half the gear I like to see two-thirds of the gear the face of the gear and you don't want to see the wear running off the end of the gear that'll create a lot of noise now we're going to put the small pinion bearing in it the front pinion bearing Always put a little oil on it. I've got some spacers set up here. Hold that for me. So why do you oil each of those bearings as you put them together? Just to pre-lube them. So they're not dry when you're trying to check the backlash and the preload. Here we can start with a little clink. Seat it all the way. Okay, now we're going to do our spacer. That sets the depth on our front support bearing. Okay, so. now, now we're gonna, before we put the seal in, we're gonna put the yoke on it. And the, the pinion nut, and we're gonna preload this and make sure everything's good preload wise. That way we don't ruin the seal if we have to take it back apart. There's a, 
there's a speck here about four inch pounds of torque on the bearing preload and that's about right so now we will take it back apart put our pinion seal in it so in this case with the new bearings we actually didn't have to adjust any of the preload no you know anymore the bearings you buy are so precise anymore um, usually if you go back in with the same shims same spacers it all it all usually usually goes back together okay now we're gonna pop our pinion seal in there I always want to put a little bit of grease on the lip of the seal pre lube and what I do is, you've got the tension spring on the seal there. I put a little grease on that tension spring too. Because if you don't, you take a chance on when you're knocking that seal in, that tension spring will jump out of place. A little grease on it will hold it in there. Otherwise you gotta take your picks and try and get it back in place. Okay, now we're gonna get a bit a little Loctite on here. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. I've always just used the liquid stuff. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah, you turn it, and it spits huh. them out. That's badass. Okay. Now we are going to remove the carrier bearings. special tool for that. Actually, let's remove the carrier bearing races first. So we can use the, I need to use the race on the puller. So we're gonna knock the axle seals out of the housings. Now to get this race out, we're gonna mount this up on the vise. So we take a roll head bar and just go side to side on this and it'll walk that race out. It's not a press fit, but it is a little bit of a tight fit. Just like that. Okay, now we're gonna take this race and use this really cool puller for jobs just like this. What we do is, I gotta get a socket. This tool has saved me many, many, many hours of work. What it does is it sits on the race, and we've got these clamshells that it down and they catch the bearing race from underneath and there's different diameters this is a bigger one then we've got some bigger ones there for like big truck stuff and then we adjust this up it basically holds the race down on the bearing so you can pull it off without ruining it when you've got to reset a rear end shim wise you can do it without ruining the bearings
bearing and race intact. We'll do the same thing on the other side. regular differential, GM, Ford, Chrysler, whatever, Toyota, you can use this to pull the pinion bearings off too, but this Subaru has a really long pinion so it doesn't, doesn't fit. Okay, now we're going to install the carrier bearings. Yep, uh-huh. I'm on it. <laughs> Here you go, sir. We're losing him. <laughs> A little bit of oil helps them drive on there. Use my hundred year old driver. Just because it stops doesn't mean it's all the way down. You always want to look underneath and make sure it's all the way down on the carrier. And that one is. Some of them the bearing inner race is recessed below the carrier so you gotta take a, a chisel and knock them down a little farther. This one's Okay, we got our new carrier bearings on. Now we need to try and get this carrier back in there. Mm -hmm. I think I want to explain what kind of uh, limited slip this is. Okay, this one in particular is a clutch style limited slip. You can see the clutches and the steel plates in here. You'll have a, a clutch plate, a steel plate, steel plate, clutch plate. And what those do is they hold tension on the side gears where the axles engage and it'll hold pressure so it wants to turn both axles at the same time. Okay, right now we're going to slide this baby back in there. It goes in easier than it came out. There is one hair's width in there to get this in. God, it's got to be like in the perfect position. It does, just like that. You got to make sure both of these ring gear bolts are vertical, completely vertical. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to put the side housings on. But first we need to get the bearing races in and out of these housings. And fairly easy if they're going straight. Okay, we need to get this old one out. So let's knock this seal out. <clears throat> now we need to mount this up in the vise and get the old race out. Okay, now. <clears throat> okay, so this one I marked with one peen mark. So that's this one. I got one peen here. Two here somewhere. Oh, right here. There's different ways to mark these. You can mark them with a 
number stamp, peen mark. Oh, 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 I ways. see you marked it. Yeah, oh, I marked okay. it. Talk about why you would mark it. Because these shims side to side are different. This is how you adjust the side to side uh, movement on the ring gear and the backlash. So these have two shims each. And I haven't measured them, but they're probably different thicknesses. And to change the the carrier side to side, you would change those shims. Hopefully, they'll come out perfect right now. But you want them to you basically you want those end caps to come off the same side that or put go back on the same side they came. Exactly, on. they have to. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll stick a couple of bolts in there. Go to this side. I've got my two peen marks here, two peen marks right there. So we'll drop that in. A couple more bolts. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we've got our carrier bearing caps in there. And we what we want is about seven to eleven thousandths backlash right here. And if I was to put a dial indicator on there, it would probably be right in there. But what I'm gonna do instead is get some oil based paint, paint the gears and check the pattern. Okay, what I use for checking gear pattern is basically yellow oil based paint. You can get it a hobby shop. The reason I use oil base is it'll mix with the oil. You don't have to really wipe it off. It's oil based. You want to get uh, I do a couple of teeth, get a nice coat on the drive side and then go down on the coast side the drive side of the gear is this side the back side of the gear the convex side the concave side is the coast side when you're driving it's pulling the gear down this way so it's hitting the back side of the tooth and when you're coasting, this is driving that one. It's going the other way. So we're going to run this in there. So we'll run this in where we can see. You want to run the ring gear through the pinion and then back the other way so you get a wear pattern on both sides. And don't smash your fingers doing it. Okay, so now we've got the wear pattern. That's the drive side. You want to make sure you've got wear on at least a half to two thirds of the tooth, which we do. You want to make sure that the pattern doesn't run off the end of the tooth, because that'll wear the tooth off. And you want it centered in the center of the tooth. This pattern looks pretty good for a used set of gears. Same thing on the coast side. It's pretty much centered in the middle of the tooth and you've got about a half a tooth of contact. It's not running off the the heel or the foot of the tooth. And it's not running off the top or the bottom of the tooth. So the pattern looks good. I think we're golden. Put some seals in it. Button it up. Nice. And get you back on the track. And see, I think a lot of guys, uh, a lot of shops that you go to, when they see a used ring and pinion, they won't 
actually take the time to check, check the, the, yeah. the wear patch, yeah. they'll just replace it, right? So that's the difference is that you actually take the time, yeah. check yeah. the wear patch, yeah. and you can determine whether you can reuse a ring and pinion because most of the time it's just the bearings in a dip that go bad. I'll show you a great example of that. This is out of my race car, my, my Nova with a small block in it. It's a drag car and I had that problem. This is the best pattern I could get out of this gear. I could only get it down here to less than half of a tooth. And in a drag car, you want a better pattern than that. And these are old gears. They're probably four or five years old and I couldn't get a pattern. And that's even taken all the shims out. I could only move it so far. So I bought a new set of gears for it and that's the pattern I got on a new set of gears. There you go, that's the difference. Old worn out gears, new gears. This one set up the first time. Oh, whoa. Yeah, see the difference? Oh, wow. Yeah, on this gear, on this gear, I couldn't get a pattern. These set up perfect. That's right, because as it wears, the wear patch is actually gonna shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll wear those teeth down where you can't see it, but it's there. Huh. So, yeah. Okay, so let's put the seals in there, the axle seals. Back to the back to the little one. Always put a little bit of grease in there for pre-lube. So we don't have to seal those end caps with RTV or anything. There's an O-ring in there. Oh, there is. I didn't see that. Yeah, there's O-rings in there, but when I took them apart, they're kind of loose. So we're going to take these back off, and you need to get new O-rings. Oh shit. So we're going to put new O-rings on there later on. Okay. Yeah, but we can still put the seals in it. Okay, cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just pop the caps back off, put new rings on them, and you'll be good to go. Cool. But you can probably get those. You know, they probably have those at the Subaru dealer. Yep. Just like that. Now we'll put your rear cover on. This gasket has a, a slinger, a built-in slinger. It says up. You put that up to the right side. If you tried to put it up to the left side, it would hit the gear. So obviously that's not right. So just like that. And that's a nice metal gasket with a, a rib in it. So you don't need any sealer or anything.